Hello everyone, this is Sarah of TheHealthyHomeEconomist.com and today I want to talk to you about farm fresh milk and finding the best quality farm fresh milk for your family. Let's say you have done your research. You have found out about how um, terrible store, pasteurized store milk is, you know, full of its antibiotics and its steroids and the unnatural way that the cows are treated and confined and all of that, you know all of that and you, you don't want anything to do with regular store milk. Let's say you also have found out about organic, uh, ultra pasteurized milk and that that is really not any better than store milk and that it's more highly processed than even store milk and it's highly allergenic and it's really not good for you either and you just don't want to buy that either. So you've decided I'm going to find a local farmer, I'm going to get myself some farm fresh milk. That's the point I want to uh, pick up with here. If you need to have more, if you are not ready to make that decision for farm fresh milk, then you need to go back and do some more research. And I have plenty of information on the blog to walk you through that process. But you've decided that you want farm fresh milk, let's find the best one for your family. Here I have two jugs. I have this jug that is farm fresh milk from Holstein cows. Those are black and white cows. Those are the cows that are typically associated with dairy and milk, at least in the United States. And here I have a jug of milk from a Jersey cow. And a Jersey is a more um, traditional breed of cow. They uh, produce generally thicker milk with more cream. And in the olden days, before, uh, past, before homogenization, you wonder what is homogenization? We all know what pasteurization is, where you heat treat the milk. Uh, homogenization is actually a process where they take the fat globules in cow milk and they break them up into tiny pieces so that the fat distributes evenly through the milk. Well, if milk is not homogenized, that means all the cream comes to the top of the milk and you basically have to shake it up before you pour a glass of milk. That is um, typical of non-homogenized milk. And back before homogenization became widespread, be, became widespread after, I guess it was probably in the 50s and the 60s when this started to come about. Even when I was a little girl in the 60s, milk was still not homogenized, at least in my area. So it's probably in the 60s, around the 70s in some places. Um, people used to judge the quality of their milk by the size of the cream line. And people knew this. They knew that the bigger the cream line, the better the quality of the milk and you didn't want milk that didn't have much of a cream line because that meant the, the milk was kind of watered down. You have a glass of milk that has lots of cream in it, you're not going to drink as much milk, you're going to get full, it's got those wonderful healthy fats in there for you that stabilize your blood sugar and that's why you don't want to drink skim milk. You don't want to drink low fat milk um, and I have a, a blog on that, why skim milk will make you fat. Pig farmers feed skim milk to their cows or to their pigs because it makes them very, very fat. So you don't want to drink skim milk. You want your whole milk to have as much cream as possible. That is indicating a very high quality farm fresh milk. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have Holstein milk, which is Holstein cows do not produce much cream. And we have Jersey cows, old fashioned Jersey cows that produce tons and tons of cream. So let's look at the cream line here. On the Holstein milk, there is no discernible cream line whatsoever. It's very watered down. This is why commercial dairies, huge dairies, like to use Holstein milk because they get a lot more milk per cow, but the milk is watered down. It's less nutritious. It's got less cream. That is why homogenization came around because the co consumer could no longer tell what was a high quality milk. If all the milk was homogenized, they didn't even know if it came from a Holstein cow or a Jersey cow. They couldn't tell. So homogenization was not for the health of the consumer or some anything like that. It was strictly to pull the wool over the consumer's eyes so the consumer was not able to judge a high quality product. But when you get a farm fresh milk you can judge the quality yourself because it's not homogenized. So you see here we've got Holstein milk. has no cream line. This is cheap farm fresh milk. You don't want to be drinking this farm fresh milk. It's, it's I mean if that's all you can get Okay, fine. But seek out a farmer who has Jersey cows. You want Jersey or Guernsey or Asian or African cows. Those are the cows that produce lots of cream. And notice, if you can zoom in here, here's the cream line on this milk. It's nearly halfway down the jug. Look at that. Look at that. Here's the cream. 
and zero cream here. What, what milk, where are you getting more for your money with the Jersey milk? You're getting more nutrition for your money, you're getting more milk for your money. This is where you want to go. Now let me just talk a little bit briefly, and I don't want to go into too much detail because I'm going to I'll link up to a very detailed article where you can read more about this issue. But the protein, the beta casein, which is a protein in the milk, is very different between Holstein and Jersey's. This is another reason why you must seek out Jersey or Guernsey or milk from Asian or African cows. You need, these are called old-fashioned cows. You do not want milk from Holsteins because the beta casein is called an A1 beta casein, which acts like an opiate in your body. It is much, it has been linked to heart disease among other ills and um, people have difficulty typically with an A1 beta casein molecule. So this is another reason why you do not want to seek Holstein milk. So let's push this out of the way. Now, this milk from the Jersey cow with a nice beautiful cream line indicating a high quality grass-fed milk contains an A2 beta casein, which is much easier to digest. It does not act like an opiate in the body and has not been linked with heart disease or any of these other ills. So if you're gonna make, if you're gonna make the effort to switch to farm fresh milk anyway, and it's not as convenient to obtain this kind of milk as it is to just run down to the store and get a half a gallon of milk if you haven't noticed. If you're gonna to go to all that effort, make sure that your effort is, you get the most for your effort, and that is to get milk from a Jersey, an old fashioned Jersey cow or a Guernsey cow that has a nice huge cream line and contains the A2 beta casein molecule, which is the one that's going to be the best and easiest to digest uh, for your body. This is Sarah, the Healthy Home Economist. I hope you've enjoyed this basic uh, lesson on how to select high quality farm fresh milk. And I'm wishing you all the best in the kitchen.